come here to show us a kingdom. That is what our rulers are worried about. No, not that kind. Then what? A sort of kingdom that a person cannot see unless he is born again. Born again? Yes. You mean like a new creature? A conversion from Gentile to Jewish? No, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Then what is born again? I hope you don't mean return to the womb, because that would be a problem for me. My mother, may she rest in peace, is dead. Truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. That part of you, that, is what must be reborn to new life. How can these things be? Ah, a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things, huh? I'm trying, Rabbi. I know. I know. Do you hear this? What? Listen. What do you hear? The wind. How do you know it's the wind? Because I can feel it. I hear its sound. Do you know where it comes from? No. Do you know where it's going? No. That's what it is to be born again of the Spirit. The Spirit may work in a way that is a mystery to you. And while you cannot see the Spirit, you can recognize his effect. Mind is consumed with thoughts of what a stir these words would cause among the teachers of the law. Yes, and I do not expect otherwise. I speak of what I know and have seen, and it has not been received by the religious leaders. It is hard to receive. So if I have told you of earthly things, and you do not believe, how can I tell you heavenly things? I believe your words. I just fear you may not have a chance to speak many more of them before you are silenced. I have come to do more than speak words, Nicodemus. More miracles? Yes, but even more than that. Do you remember when the children of Israel complained against God and against Moses in the wilderness of Paran? Yes, they wanted to return to Egypt and they cursed the manna that God sent them. And then? They were bitten by serpents. And they were dying. But? But God made a way for them to be healed. Moses lifted the bronze serpent in the desert, and people only needed to look at it. So will the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Our people are not dying from snake bites. They're dying from taxation and oppression. I'm sorry to disappoint you. But I did not come to deliver the people from Rome. Then from what? From sin. From spiritual death. God loves the world in this way. That he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So this has nothing to do with Rome. It's all about Sin. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, Nicodemus. He sent him to save it through him. It's as simple as Moses' serpent on the pole. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Have you ever heard anything like this before? Shh. When I met Lilith, Mary, that day, I told my wife and my students I said, she was beyond human aid. Only God could have healed her. And then I saw her healed. And here you are. The healer. I, my whole life, 
I have wondered if I would see this day. Follow me, and you'll see more. All right, Freedom Church, come on. You are so welcome. You are so welcome to, to wherever you are joining. If you are in our fire starter churches, in our campuses all over the world, you are welcome. We are part of a great movement. Wherever you're joining, you are so welcome. And we are filming from Kigali, Rwanda, East Africa. That's just amazing. And, and special shout out to, you know, DLT. Well done for everything you do, you know, behind the scenes, how you strategize. We don't even know what happens behind the scenes. But we are so grateful. We see the results. And we're so grateful. And thank you so much. Uh, we special shout out to, to Chris Kopok and Naomi Kopok for having, having come here in Africa. Uh, you spent here 10 years planting church and guys, we are so grateful for you and well done. We elevate you. Uh, we're so grateful and uh, yes, let's do this. Today we are in part three. We're doing part three of The Chosen and it's just amazing to just to go back and look at the life of Jesus, the life that he lived on earth here so that we can actually learn uh, from him. I really believe that um, if you take seriously this word, um, it's going to change the, the, your life. It's going to change the course of your life. It's going to change the, the direction of your life. And I, I, I am really like so um, excited to bring this. So we are looking at Jesus, the chosen, um, the one who came from heaven um, to, to save the world, right? And, um, you know, sometimes, you know, as Christians, we can spend so many years in church. Sometimes we get exhausted. You know, sometimes we, um, we actually wonder, like, what, what we are doing, what we are uh, part of. And, you know, sometimes we wonder, really, what are we, what is this about? And, you know, when we look at Jesus, we actually get to know exactly what this is all about. He was born in a manger. He was being chased down by the, you know, the, the king of that time, Herod, uh, the king of Judea at that time, and he was uh, under the influence of the Roman Empire. And when he grew up, when he started his ministry, I was so much intrigued of the way Jesus was not that much um, interested in uh, revenging you know, the people that you know, almost killed him or, um, or fixing the problems that um, were there at that time. And uh, when Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? You know, they replied, uh, one of the prophets or, you know, uh, Elijah, John the Baptist, or, you know, they have come back. And he asked them, he, has, he asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And son, uh, Simon Peter, I love Simon Peter. Um, Simon Peter said, you are the son of the living God. You are the Messiah. That is in Matthew 16, 16. So people started to know that he is the Messiah and he was the Messiah, right? But people were, you know, many people at that time, they were expecting the Messiah to come to fix their problems, to come to fix, to remove the, the, the oppression they were under, you know, uh, the oppression of the Roman Empire. They, you know, they were expecting the Messiah to do certain things. They, were expect, they, were, they had a list of things that he had to, to fix, right? But Jesus, when he was starting his ministry, when he was actually doing what he, was, he came to do, he did not overthrow the Roman Empire. He did not uh, fight with the kings. He, did not, he, did not, he was not much concerned about that. And when I was watching that, I said, at least you could have, you know, you could have kicked out some, some of the, you know, that oppression, at least, you know, the people, for the people to be free, to be a little bit comfortable. And he even went up to the cross, you know, and he said, it is finished. It is accomplished. So what, what was finished? What was accomplished? And I believe as Christians, sometimes we have things that Jesus has to fix. Sometimes we have, uh, we have a list of what Jesus has to do for us. Sometimes we have expectations of what Jesus has to do for us. And, you know, I'm not saying it's bad, but, you know, why didn't Jesus overthrow the, the Roman Empire? Why at least, uh, why, when the, the Romans were, were actually crucifying him, why didn't he do anything? You know? um, but you know, Jesus was on a higher mission, was on a better mission, on a deeper mission than that. And I believe as, as Christians, if we don't um, uh, take hold of that mission, 
if we don't align our mission with that mission, we are going to spend so many years in church and we are going to, to, to burn out. We are going to be confused. We are going to, we're going to have a, a life that is miserable. But if we align our mission with the mission that Jesus had, that's when things are going to be solved. That's when the, our problems are going to fall down, you know, without even knowing, just by aligning our mission to Jesus' mission. And this is what we want to talk about today. As I was watching The, the Chosen and um, uh, Nicodemus, one of, the, one of the, the Pharisees at that time, he was asking questions to Jesus. He was really questioning him. And, you know, it's great questions, really. You know, and Jesus answered them all and he was actually he, you know Kodimus, he he got it you know it's not everything we see in that in that in those in the series um the chosen is not really written in the bible but you know it shows you that a, a bigger picture at least you know just to understand and nicodemus was really you know he started trusting jesus he jesus he started he started uh believing in what and he even understood what jesus actually the mission of jesus uh, on this on this earth and now we also as Christians today, we still need to understand that mission and we still need to run with that mission. In Luke 6, uh, 40, that's the word the Bible says. It says the student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like the, their teacher. Everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. We're not above Jesus. We're not above um, uh, him. Yes, we are going to, he said, you know, I have to go because you have to, you know, you will do greater things. You will, you will reach further, right? You will do uh, what I didn't do, right? But the mission is still the same because we are not above Jesus. We are not above Jesus. So every student, every uh, student who was trained perfectly, he has to have the same mission as his teacher. And today, church, I believe that God is calling us again. He's drawing back, uh, you know, uh, our attention to the mission and let's look now at that mission do we have that mission do we still have that mission you know you've done maybe so much in church you've done so much in um, for for the kingdom right and today let's come back again and see am i still having that same mission as jesus right and you know just to to do some um, retrospective to actually ask yourself and uh, introspective and to see is this really what i'm still doing Jesus, uh, in Matthew 1, 21, it says, She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So the mission of Jesus was actually very clear, right? It was very clear. It was uh, to bring salvation to the world, to bring salvation to people in the world, right? To bring salvation to us. And, you know, as I was actually, you know, reading this verse, I asked myself, is that really my mission today? Is that my mission today? You know, when I, when I wake up in the morning, when I plan my life, am I planning my life according to this mission? According to, for, you know, just for me to see other people getting saved. You know, that's the mission we have to, to be having. Whatever you are doing in life, you know, you have to be having this mission of seeing other people saved. That's why we are here on earth. That's why we are Christian today. We are Christians today. That's why you are in church. That's why you, you know, we do what we do in church. It is so that others can actually be saved. So we've got things, I've got things for Jesus to fix. I've got so many things that, you know, I can give a list to Jesus, fix this. But until, until I align, I align my, my mission, to this mission of seeing other people saved, I am telling you, I'm going to spend so many years just being confused, just being, uh, um, you know, just knowing, n not knowing exactly what I am doing. You know, is Jesus really, is God seeing me? Is God, you know, uh, you know, taking care of me? Because many times as Christians, we think, and you know, it's, which is not uh, really uh, bad, but we think that Jesus, when we get saved, Jesus now is ready to fix all our problems. But imagine Jesus went on the cross and he left the Roman Empire still ruling. And, I, and, I, and you know, it's good to, to remember sometimes, to remind ourselves sometimes 
that some of the things, some of the problems that we want Jesus to fix may not be fixed. As a matter of fact, you know, the Bible says that, you know, we are approaching the, the end of the world. Things are going to get worse. That's what the Bible says. But it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that God is not working. It doesn't mean that Jesus, the mission of Jesus, is not, um, not being accomplished. He went on the cross and said, it is finished. I have accomplished this. And yet, people were, you know, the, the disciples after that, they were saying, um, you know, we believed, we thought that he was going to, you know, to get the Roman Empire out. We thought that he was going to fix that. We thought that he was going to... We thought that he was going to do this and this and this and this. But, you know, now he's dead. Now he's, you know, he's in the tomb for three days. You know, he went, he, he went on the cross. People, many people were disappointed because they knew he was the Messiah. So, and even John sent his disciples. He was in prison and he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, are you the one or we should expect another one to come? And Jesus said, you know what he actually you know, told him? He actually repeated the mission that he had. And that mission is what is actually what the, the, the prophet Isaiah has, had prophet, prophesied uh, uh, before Jesus came. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he sent back his disciple, the, the, the John's disciple, and tell him, go and tell him that the blind are receiving sight, that the dead are being raised, that the good news is being preached to the, to, to, to the poor. And that was his mission. You know, his reply was not saying, I'm the one, don't worry, you know, I'm going to fix things, you know, uh, I'm going to get you out of prison, I'm, you know, I'm going to fix that. No, he sent, him, he sent his disciples back and he said, go tell him the mission. And we, have, we still have to stick to that mission. And this was the mission of Jesus. To preach the good news. To, to heal the blind. You know, with those who, are not, who don't see. To actually, you know, to see. And those who are oppressed. To, re, to, to receive freedom. And, you know, he did that and he went on the cross and he did that. He accomplished that. That was the mission. So I was, I was, I was blind. I was, uh, I was in prison. I didn't see, I didn't know I was in prison. But, but, but Jesus, he took me out of that. And, you know, sometimes we think that prison is just prison, the physical prison that we know. Or uh, being blind is just being blind with the physical eyes. But it's more than that. And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to actually deal with the real problem of this world. The real issue of the world. Which was salvation has to come. Salvation is the solution of this world. So just think, be honest with yourself today. Ask yourself, is this my mission? To see other people saved. To see other people saved. I asked myself, and I, and I have to confess, I said, I think that's why I'm, I, I've been having problems, you know, confusion. But when I actually received that mission and said, all right, this is, this is what I have to focus on. That's when all the pro problems started, you know, falling down. They started falling down. And, you know, and here's how you are going to, to, to see if, you know, the mission is actually what, this mission is what is, what, uh, is your mission. Um, it's, it's actually when you read in, uh, in, 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 in Luke 15, uh, Jesus gave a parable of the, of the, of the woman uh, who had 10, 10 coins and uh, she lost one. And, you know, she, what did she do? She actually uh, swept the house. She searched thoroughly in the house just to finally and find, to find that lost coin. And she rejoiced. She said she even called the, the neighbors, come and rejoice with me, you know. And Jesus said uh, in, in verse 10, Luke 15, verse 10, In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. You know, this is what heaven rejoices in. This is what the angels rejoice in. This is what God rejoices in. When one sinner repents, when salvation comes to one person, this is the real mission that we should have. So ask yourself, 
are you doing everything like this woman who really searched in the house? She removed everything. She did everything so that with that one coin, that one person can actually be saved. Are you doing everything? Are you doing everything in your life to see people saved? And I know this might be challenging. You say, this is a, maybe a work of the pastors or, you know, uh, the leadership team or, you know, this is a work of, this is, this is all of us. We have, we have to be having the same mission, all of us as a church. And, you know, if we now, we, we want to just, I just want to go uh, deep into this mission and see what really we have to do. And I want to give three things, three points uh, that are going to help us really uh, see that, you know, we are in this mission or we should do, we should actually jump on this mission. And the first one is actually that mission requires sacrifice. This mission requires sacrifice. This is what um, the Bible says in Romans 5 uh, verse 6. It says, for when the time was right, the anointed one came and died to demonstrate his love for sinners who were entirely helpless, weak and powerless to save themselves. So this is what uh, Jesus did. You know, at the right time, he came for the, to the people that were like clueless that they are lost. And people outside here are clueless. They are, you know, they are blind. They are, you know, they see but they don't see. They hear but they don't hear. Right? They are clueless. They are helpless. And Jesus, you know, even looked at the crowd. Uh, when, when you look at, at, at this uh, series, the chosen, he looked at the crowd, and he felt compassion to the people for, for the people, because he, he they were lost and they don't know that they are lost. But you know, who knows? Is the one who has that mission. And me and you, we have that mission. We know what is going on. We know that the problem is not the Roman Empire. We know that the problem is not the, uh, the, 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 the gender issues issue in, the, in this world today. That is not the main problem. It might not even get solved. We don't know how it's going to go, right? But the problem is, is people not having salvation. People not having salvation. And us, as Christians, we are in church and we are telling Jesus, fix this, fix that, fix this. And yet he is actually calling us. He is choosing us to do what? To think about others who are helpless. You know the truth that Jesus came to save people. You know it. You know he's the Messiah. You know he's the son of the living God. And he is now like telling you, have the same mission as me. Think about the others. Think about the others outside church. Think of, you know, I think of uh, Chris Kopak who came, I keep talking about Chris Kopak, I'm so grateful for you. You know, um, Chris Kopak who came to, you know, to, to, to Africa, you know, here, you know, with his family, his kids, you know, he sacrificed. When, I, when we were talking about that this mission uh, requires sacrifice, he came here, right? And I think of George, you know, when he, I remember, you know, on his uh, Instagram stories, you know, showing his, like under the rain on the bike, you know, in Kigali, you know, st you know, trying to build church, trying to plant church. You know, I was wondering what, what are these guys doing? What do they know that we don't know? There is something they know that we don't know, right? And that is the mission. That is the mission. And we all have to jump on that mission. All of us, we have to jump on that mission, wherever you are. And well done, you know, the fire starters, you know, wherever you are, you know, you, yes, this mission requires sacrifice. It requires sacrifice. You go through things, you know, you see things wherever you are. No one knows, right? But you are going through that so that people can get saved. And well done for doing that. And we have to do more, you know. We are so many, you know, we have to do more. You know, the Bible says that, you know, the, 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 the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. But Freedom Church... As I, as I believe that, you know, in this uh, in new vision that we have, uh, Soul Twins, this is going, we, we have to jump on this, all of us, we have to jump on it. We have to do everything to see people saved. You know, this is a mechanism of, of salvation that is coming, you know, that we have to jump in and we have to, to sacrifice, you know, some of our, of, our, of, our, of, our, of our money, of our time, of our, you know, everything, like what we have so that we can see the world, you know, saved. This is what, this is the mission. This is still the mission. And we have to do that. And Jesus, he went on the cross 
just, to, to, just so that we can actually continue that ourselves. And today, you are the one. You are the one to do that. And the second thing is that the mission requires to serve. It requires you to serve, not to be served. You know, in Matthew 20, uh, 28, it says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom to many, you know, for many. You know, he, didn't, he did not come to be served. He came to serve, actually. You know, you might wonder, you know, sacrifice and serve, into, uh, serving, sacrifice, they all go together. And the reason why, you know, I put this differently, because sometimes we, you know, <clears throat> we sacrifice and we go through things, right? Um, but, you know, on the way, we actually want to be served, you know, because we have sacrificed, we have done a lot, and we want to be served. But Jesus, you know, that was not his mission. And that should not be our mission, right, to be served. We should keep serving. Some of you, maybe, you know, you, you, you went on a church plant, you know, and you came back, or you, you really sacrificed, you really did a lot, right? And even today, you still have to serve. You still have to serve. And that's what God is calling us to do. The mission Jesus had was not to be served. He did not come on earth to be served. And I am not expecting to be served. I'm, I'm expecting to serve others, to serve this world, to serve the, the, the clueless, the helpless, the confused. We are called to serve. And, you know, when you feel like you want to be served, just, you know, rebuke that and, and, and go serve, serve others and keep serving. You know, I, I just, you know, I look at George, for example, even today, he went to Nairobi, you know, from Kigali to Nairobi, and he is still serving, you know, he is still serving. And we all have to do that. We can serve and not sacrifice, you know. Uh, we can do things just because it's convenient, right? We can just serve in church because it's just convenient. And our DNA says, you know, first and best. We have to give our first and best, right? We have to go the extra mile. We don't just have to do the bare minimum. We have to go the extra mile. We have to do our first and best. So serving without um, sacrifice is actually you are being served because you know you're getting maybe some kind of glory out of that. You can some kind of you're getting some kind of recognition out of that, right? But that's not who we are. You know, we serve and we do our first and best. So ask yourself: Are you doing your first and best today? Are you doing your first and best to see other people saved? And that's what we need to do. Jesus did not come to be served. He came to serve. And the last one, the last point, the thing that Jesus said that was actually, it was mind blowing. It's actually in, in, verse, um, in Luke 12, verse 51 to 53. He said, do you think that I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against three, against, uh, against each other. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son, son against father. Mother against daughter and daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against a daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He did not come to bring peace. Of course, Jesus, he is the Prince of Peace. You know, he, he, he is for peace. He is for unity, right? But here in this verse, he says that, you know, that's not what I actually came to do. And, you know, many times in the Bible, you know, the word chosen is actually, uh, the Bible says, you know, to be set apart, right? And that's what Jesus came to do. He came to set apart some people. He came to set you apart. He's actually choosing you today. He came to, ch to set you apart so that you can serve him. Your family might not even agree with you. The people who are close with you, uh, to you, might not agree with you, but God is setting you apart. That's what Jesus, that was his mission, to set apart some people. And you are one of them. And God chooses you today. You are the chosen, actually. You know, as much as Jesus was the chosen, but he is choosing you now. You are the chosen today. And we need to take this gospel to the whole world. We need to do everything. So I'm not saying move countries, by the way. I'm not saying that. But there is something that God says to you. There is something that God speaks to you. You know exactly what you have to do. You know exactly what you have to sacrifice in. You know exactly how you have to serve. Are you doing that with your first and best? And that's what we need to do. And you know, when we do this, 
when we accept, when we allow Jesus to set us apart and do his work, you are not going to be disappointed. And the problems that you think that you had are going to fall down. Because, you know, many times we want Jesus to serve us, you know, and yet he is asking us to serve him. I look at the disciples in the, in the chosen series. I look at the, the disciples, how, you know, I was actually looking at them. I say, Jesus, is that really, man, it looks like, you know, that is exploitation. Like these guys, give them some, give them some, some good life. Give them some, what they need. Give them, uh, you know, they were living in temporary shelters, you know, from one place to another, you know. Um, they, some of them, they have left everything they had to follow Jesus. And I, I, I started feeling pity, you know, pity uh, for these disciples, for these guys who were there, you know. Um, but Jesus did not feel like that way because Jesus has a bigger picture. And he, Jesus sees you. He's not exploiting. He doesn't want to exploit you. He doesn't want to use you just to, to throw you uh, uh, after that. No, he cares about you. And there is one person that I know, actually, that was uh, a bit skeptical and, and, and scared. You know, he said, if I give my, if I, I know that God is calling me, I know that God is, you know, he's asking me to lay down some things. And, uh, you know, I'm skeptical. I, I won't be in control anymore. You know, uh, when I accept the call of God, I won't be in control anymore. And, um, you know, I just remembered, in other words, he was saying that he is going to exploit me, right? God is, I know he's going to exploit me. He's going to ask me more than I actually have, right? And um, I just remembered one verse uh, in the Bible when Jesus was referring to uh, the, the parable of the, of, the, of the talents. He gave uh, a master that went away and he gave them, uh, a master gave his servants 10 talents, another one five, another one one. And the one who had one talent, he did not multiply it. And his excuse, uh, it's in, in Matthew 25 uh, verse 24 it says then the man who had received one bag of gold which is one talent came and said master he said i knew that you are a hard man harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seeds <laughs> and so i was afraid and went uh, went and hid your gold in the ground see here it is it belongs to you so he's at, he's his, his excuse was, I know that you are a hard man. I know that you're gonna, you ask like more than you give. I know that you are a hard man. In other words, I know that you are a very exploitative man. <laughs> you know, you are a man who asks more than he gives. And, and what did the master say? Wicked servant, you didn't do well. Actually, what he had was removed from him. So when we think that God is going to exploit us, that God is going to ask us more and we get scared and we get skeptical. We want to be in control of our lives, to, you know, to be in control of everything we have, you know, because we don't want God to exploit us and say, hey, he might ask me to give, to lay this down. God is not demanding things from us. He's given us everything we have. And today he's actually choosing you. He's setting you apart. Allow him to do that. Allow him to do that. And we need to jump on this mission. Focus on that mission. Ask yourself, am I focusing on this mission? The big deal is others getting saved. And if you, if you allow Jesus to set you apart in that way, he's gonna use you and he wants to use you today. And I want to pray as I finish that you allow him to do, the, to do so. You allow him to have the same mission as he had. Allow him to do that. I know sometimes you know, it's, it, it can be demanding, it can be not demanding, but it can be hard. It can be hard. And this mission, as we saw, it requires a sacrifice. Yes. And we are ready. I am so ready. I am so ready. And the guys in, in, in our church, you know, here in Freedom Kigali, they are so ready. God is raising leaders, ready, ready to go on this mission. And are you ready where you are right now? Maybe you sit in a fire starter, uh, in, a, in a home. Are you ready to give up some of the things that Jesus is asking you to give up? Are you ready to pull down, to lay down your life for him so he can actually use you? And this is the time. This is your time. This is our time. Jesus is choosing you. And I'm going to pray for you right now. If you are that person who says, God, use me. God, I want to have this mission. The same mission you had, Jesus. I want to have it. 
I want to jump on it. If you are that person and you want to renew that commitment, maybe it was you know, before you, you used to really sacrifice and now you have given up. You say it's too much. Maybe you want to come back. The comeback is still on. Come back to the mission. And I want to pray for you right now. If you are that person who say, I want to serve God. I want to give my life to God. I want to, to give everything I have to Him. You might be, you know, you might have been saved for a long time or you came today in church and you say, I want to give my life to God. I want to recommit everything I have to Him. I just want to ask you to stand where you are right now. Stand where you are. Be bold. Be bold and stand. Stand and I'm going to pray for you. Stand and I'm going to pray for you. And well done for standing. Well done for standing. Wherever you are, well done for standing. In our venues, well done for standing. Stand. We want to serve God. We want to carry this mission. And we are going to make it. No one is going to stop us. You know, we're going to say at the end of our lives, I have fought a good fight and I have finished. Are you going to say that at the end of your life? Stand where you are right now. If you want to say, if you're saying, I want to serve God. God, use me. Amen. Well done for standing. And let's pray. Father, we're so grateful that we even get to, to, to know that this is what we are supposed to do, God. It is a privilege that you have given us, God. You know, to just to give us this, this wisdom, this discernment of seeing what to do today, God, for, for, for us to give, to give you glory, God. Father, I pray for everyone who, has stu who stood up, God. Father, I pray that you fill them. Holy Spirit, fill them afresh. Fill them again. Holy Spirit, fill people. Fill people and send them out. Send them out. Father, you are sending us. You are sending us apart, God. I pray that they, they, they don't become afraid of anything, God. If, if people don't, don't agree with them, if they don't get approval or validation from, the, from their friends, I pray that you keep them strong, God, that they serve you, God. Father, we are ready to serve you, Lord. We are ready to leave everything, God, and serve you, God. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on. Well done, well done for standing and praying. And the location leaders are going to continue from here. We love you guys from Kigali. God bless you.